Welcome to Traitorous Trap Tuesday. This is the DMG and welcome to 70 System. And in this one, we're going to be talking about the Double Tilt Trap. So if you're enjoying Traitorous Trap Tuesday, consider supporting me on patreon.com forward slash 70 system. Click that like button and click the bell so that you get notified when these videos come out. So the double tilt trap. This is another fiendish trap that is an adaptation of some things you've probably seen in computer games. Um, but it's going to the next D&D &D killing level. So essentially how this trap works is you have a long corridor, probably 60 feet in length. You've got an arch like this. Um, that's uh, So the arch is running along the corridor like that. And there's one underneath. And then there's another one after that. There's a pin in the middle that is... You've got the floor tilts like this. And can go full 360 in each. So you've got almost like sunglasses. So, that's the basic mechanics of how this trap works. Very, very simple. How do you obfuscate this? Well, it just looks like the floor. And because you need the space in the ceiling, if it was going to go vertical for some reason, you would have this archway that follows the passageway. And in there, you'd have stalactites that have been meticulously sharpened to look almost natural. So a keen observer would see that they have been viciously sharpened. Um, but to the casual observation, it's just stalactites. Below the tilting mechanism, you have the same arch. And in there, you would have stalagmites that, again, have been sharpened. And only to close inspection would you notice that they have viciousness attached to the end. But of course, the only way you would notice these under wing is if, of course, the the trap is already set off. So once again, this uh, trap requires a lure, as most traps do, and this is best placed right at the entrance to the final location. So you would have a door on the other end um, to make it more complicated to get through, so the trap goes right up to the door. So. You, there's nothing to stand on on the other side. That's part of the fiendish nature of this trap. If you wanting to be a little lenient, you just don't have a door there. But really, this needs to be the, the way to the final big boss battle or the way out of the dungeon or whatever. You have to traverse this passageway that contains the double tilt trap. Of course, you know, we do use this lure a lot where they have to go in that direction. So there's not much choice. But, I mean, that's standard trap making is that you 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 want to place it in a location that's going to do the most damage. But if you want to do some alternative lures, you can consider something like at the hinge point of one of the tilts, you can place a something like a skeleton that has a bag. You know, you know, dead dude who obviously got munched in the trap before and he did not survive but he managed to get to the midpoint because the midpoint is it's not going to tilt if you're standing on the midpoint so he'd be at the midpoint of the first trap if you'd like you could put him at the midpoint of the second trap the choice is yours depends on how evil you are <laughs> if you're going to put something in the bag I would suggest something that does not help with uh, solving this trap because the person who had the bag would have used it. The trigger is very simple. It's just a weight-based system. So the moment they stand on it, that's when the thing starts to tilt and they would fall through. If they run across, they get to the other side and the tilt, they fall through. They jump to the next one and the next one tilts down as well. If they manage to run up to the other side, but someone stands on the side, it can raise them up. If they're a halfling and a human or a half-orc or someone stands on the other end, they can be launched up into the ceiling. And that's where we've got some friendly spikes. In fact, the skeleton in the middle, you could have a nice big 
stalactite hole in his forehead where he would have been launched into the ceiling by one of his friends who basically decided to go and die somewhere else. In terms of containment, there is really this just these double arches. Um, the trap itself, you you once you're on it, that's when all your problems are starting to happen, and you've got it's the solutions. There are many different solutions to this trap, and you should allow your players to come up with whatever solutions there are. They could use magic to fly over it. They could use things to wedge. They could use all manner of different things to to stop this trap from doing its thing. So the effect is several different things. You can have, you've got the spikes, so they could um, take uh, piercing damage from the spikes. And if, for instance, the thing were to spin right away around, they could take um, crushing damage from the f floor piece coming back to hit them. They fall down, hit the spikes, and then the floor comes back up. They can be pinned between the floor and the, the tilt. So they can get crushing damage there, and they can continue to take crushing damage as the sheer weight of this thing it start, begins to crush them, and they need to be pulled out. And so their buddies have to try and push it back down and pull them out, and you can see where this is going. So as far as disposal goes, um, if they most of the times they would fall through down into the bottom, so you'd have about a one or two foot gap between the tilt and the spikes, and anyone who's impaled on there just, would just slide down the spike. So you can also have a whole bunch of skeletons and things that line the base of the spikes. So they're not really disposed of, they just rot down at the bottom, which you could then use as a means of giving people a, the sense that there is a trap here by um, the smell of death, um, the smell of grease on the hinged portion of the tilt mechanism or by the sheer fact that there are these arches with stalactites coming out of the ceiling so it'd be very difficult to adapt this trap so we'll, we'll there's, there's not a lot that the trap can do to adapt itself other than the fact that the base of the um, tilt mechanism is also the floor so even if it does a full 180 degree flip it's still a floor on the other side so it can be upside down and then there's, of course, the reset. The reset is just, it goes back to level again. So it's a well-balanced, double-tilt, wobbly floor. Of course, what you can also do is if you have a villain or someone and they've been chasing them through the dungeon, they can run down this corridor where the floors are locked. They get through the door and they pull a lever that they clunk, 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 unlocks the tilt mechanism. Um... That's pretty cool, especially if the characters are now already on the tilt mechanism. This is going to make this corridor very, very interesting. And then he slams the door shut <laughs> and locks it and activates the poison handle. <laughs> it all depends on how far you want to go. So I hope you enjoyed this double tilt trap on Treacherous Trap Tuesday. Click the like button and I will see you in the next one.